Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Rita. I am the Program and Technology Specialist here for the Wood County Committee on Aging. I am excited to do this program again. I've done it a lot over the years. And um, the thing about Facebook is that it changes so much because, you know, it has evolved over the years. And every time there's an update with Facebook, you might see some changes. But I'm going to share my PowerPoint now and we'll go over lots of um, items. So if you have questions, feel free to chime in. And then eventually I will be showing you the functions on my Facebook. So we can look at like a live version of Facebook and what it looks like and how you can use different parts of it. Um, so let me take a minute here. Right. So hopefully you should see my screen at this point. Again, my name is Rita. And um, the first thing I want to show you is basically what we're going to be talking about adding friends, editing your profile, um, talking about notifications, how to update your status and what that even means and then your news feed. That is probably going to be the most pertinent part for you um, because that's what it, people spend most of their time on is scrolling through their news feed, but we will, we will get to that. So let's begin by just explaining what Facebook is. It's a social network. So it was created to connect people from all over the world. And actually it started out only um, for college students, but that has obviously changed. Anyone could um, uh, use a Facebook now. I'm adding someone into our program at this point, so I just want to welcome them. Hi, Annette. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Feel free, you can mute and unmute yourself and ask questions where you want, or you can save your questions for the end. Okay. Okay. <laughs> back here. So we are just reviewing what is Facebook. And you add what are called friends, and we'll, we'll dive into that term in a little bit. You can exchange messages with people on your Facebook, and then you can take a look at the things that they decide to share on their personal Facebook page. So I have heard it compared to as a blog, um, and there's a lot of different ways people use Facebook to communicate. And we will review that after a little bit here. I'm welcoming someone else into the room. Hi, Carlton. Hi, how are you? Hi, Rita. Welcome, welcome. We were just diving into the first part. So feel free to chime in with questions. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at my Facebook page later and, and we can see the different types of ways people communicate. Some use Facebook as a way to share pictures um, or videos of their life, or some people may use it as a way to update all of their friends and families using words. Um, it's also a very large platform for the news media to share news immediately. Um, and I think there's a lot of more uses to it, but we'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit. What is, what, when we talk about your Facebook profile, that means you have a customized page just for you, where you can add information about yourself, pictures, um, possibly maybe where you graduated from high school or college, um, or you can share things that interest you. Um, Facebook was founded in 2004 and it is considered the largest social network in the world. And this number is a little staggering to me, but about 2.7 billion active people use this social media today. And some of the competitors of Facebook are Instagram, which is actually owned by Facebook, but it is a little bit different. You also have Twitter and there's Snapchat and a few others, but Facebook has definitely dominated the social media world and has been around the longest. 
So how does Facebook make money? You do not, uh, you are not charged to have a Facebook. There is no fee. The way that Facebook makes money is through their advertising revenue. So just to give you a glimpse of the money that Facebook makes, this is straight from their um, report from quarter one of 2020. They brought in $17.44 billion in ad revenue, which is incredible. So the way they make money is through advertisements being shown to you. And we'll talk a little bit more about targeted marketing, but there is, you know, I don't, I don't know if concern's the right word I want to use, but there is an awareness knowing that advertisements are targeted to certain people based on a lot of things, based on the demographic, how, you know, how old you are, what things that you have listed that you are interested in. It could even tie into a Google search that you made and all of a sudden you might be getting advertisements targeted to you. So Facebook has a lot of um, influence over users, which is why so many people use it for marketing. And that's why they make so much money. Here are some brief statistics. Um, so we have got, you know, a large range of people that use Facebook, but a lot of them um, tend to be between ages 25 and 35. On average, there are five new profiles that are created every second. Um, there are 300 million photo uploads every day. It is something that a lot of people spend time on. And you might hear the words of, you know, scrolling through Facebook and how time gets away from people. It is something that, um, you know, across the generations, people use very often. So when you are creating your Facebook, some of you I know said that you already have a Facebook, but some of you who do not, how do we make a profile, right? Th this is a, a good question. Well, the first thing that you would be creating is um, you would put a picture maybe of yourself up there. That way, along with your name would be your picture so that people would definitely know that it is you who has that Facebook page. Now, you can share any photo you would like. It doesn't necessarily have to be a picture of you. It could be a picture of your cat or a picture of scenery that you really enjoy. Um, it, there are no specifications on what your profile picture looks like, though it helps to have something maybe with you in it. Um, and you can take a new picture. You can add a picture from 20 years ago if you've got it on your device. But one thing to remember is that your profile picture is always public. So if someone searched Rita Brisky and they were able to find my profile, they would be able to see my profile picture that I choose to put up. So that's something to keep in mind that is always going to be public. Now, talking about public versus private, this is a very important thing I think worth noting, and we will be navigating this directly on my Facebook page. But you can edit your privacy settings to your preference. For example, I have a Facebook, and let's say one of you wanted to become my friend. That would mean that you would want to see the things that I share from my Facebook. And we call that friends, whether that means family, actual friends, acquaintances, what have you. That is the term that Facebook uses. So friend requests are something that you would either receive from someone who found your Facebook, or you could send a friend request to somebody that you know. You have the control to say yes or no to a friend request. So for example, maybe I met someone um, through a friend and they found me on Facebook and I maybe think, well, I don't know them that well, so I'm going to deny the friend request. And by doing that, 
you stop them from being able to see your full Facebook page. You may be someone who doesn't really worry about that, but for me, I'm very careful about who I allow on my Facebook page because I would prefer to know them pretty well. And it helps to have that kind of security on your Facebook. So there are three levels of privacy. The first level is everyone, meaning if you have your Facebook page allow everyone to see, that means everything you share, your, your thoughts, your pictures, your videos, everyone can see it without having to be your friend. That's not my recommendation for most people. You would notice that businesses who have Facebooks obviously would want everyone to be able to see their information. And we will take a look at a business Facebook um, when I navigate on my own. So it just depends on your preference. If you don't mind that anyone could see what you're sharing, then you can keep it very open and public. My recommendation is this second option. This is called friends only. And that means anyone you've accepted as a friend on Facebook can see your stuff and that's it. Now, like I said, friends is a very loose term. That could mean anything to you. That could be your family, your actual close friends, maybe some acquaintances from the senior center that you don't know very well, but you're still friends with on Facebook. So that's up to you, but that is a really good layer of privacy that I recommend having. There is an option though, a third option I should say, and this is called friends of friends. Meaning, okay, so let's break this down. Me, I'm friends with my sister Monica on Facebook. Okay, we are friends, we can see each other's profiles. If I select this privacy mode, then her friends would be able to see my Facebook page, even if I'm not friends with them. So that adds, think about it. Okay, if I have Monica as a friend, then all of her friends can see my Facebook if they look. It really opens up a lot of people to see your stuff. So again, I recommend having your privacy settings on friends only. When you created your Facebook, if you have one, you choose these options when you create your Facebook. But everything is changeable. If you decide all of a sudden that you wanna keep it very private with only your friends, or maybe you're trying to start a new business and you want everybody to see your Facebook, you can change that anytime. <clears throat> but, there are ways that you can achieve privacy without even touching the settings. First of all, reveal only information about yourself that you're comfortable sharing with others. So obviously keeping any medical information about you, maybe to yourself, obviously not your social security number, maybe you're not even willing to share your phone number on Facebook. But just know that once it's out there, on the internet, it could possibly be out there forever. So always keep that in mind. You can use a different name than your given name. So for me, I have my first name, my maiden name, and my married name on my Facebook. But some people may prefer using their first and middle name. Some people may prefer to um, make up a name completely different than their own or make it unique so that maybe your friends would know who that is, but nobody else would. You can use a different email address for that account. You can be very careful about who you accept as your friends. Um, but one thing that I get asked a lot is about people getting hacked. So this happened the other day for me. I am friends with, let's say, we're gonna call him John Smith. I've been friends with John Smith on Facebook for years. And all of a sudden, I got a friend request from John Smith. 
And this may have happened to some of you who have Facebooks, but I, you have to think to yourself, gosh, I know that I've been friends with John Smith on Facebook before now. I wonder why I'm getting a second friend request. So if that ever happens to you, that person might be being impersonated. And we call that being hacked as well. But a lot of times people who are hackers might look at John Smith's profile. They might take his picture and put it into a new profile and request people like you. And what you might see is they might ask for money, making you think that they're your actual John Smith friend, but it's not actually them. So if you ever come across that situation, you can report these problems right to Facebook. And it's important to really think twice if you're getting a friend or a Facebook friend request when you already know that you're friends with them. So always be wary of that. It doesn't happen that often, but it happens often enough that it's worth pointing out. Um, so just be very wary about accepting friends on Facebook and you can do a lot to protect yourself that way. So we'll talk about ads in a little bit, but like I said, Facebook makes money on advertisements. There is no way to get rid of advertisements on your Facebook. So you will see things, advertisements for anything. Maybe you Googled a bike because you're searching for a bike, you might start seeing advertisements for bikes on Facebook. Right now, during this election time, you will probably be seeing advertisements for candidates near you. And it goes based off of location. So you may be seeing advertisements for local um, elections and especially for the presidential election. For me, when I was getting married a couple of years ago, I was getting advertisements for all wedding related things. So there's no getting rid of it, but they tend to be rather relevant to you. But like I said, you can't get rid of it, but if there are certain things that you don't want to see, like let's say you don't want to keep looking at political advertisements, you can change that preference in your settings, which is really, really nice. Um, especially if you want to keep a lighter feel watch it looking at social media and maybe less news related or advertisements. So when we talk about friends, we can talk, we can search for specific people. Now, like, let's say you're new to Facebook and you know that your sister or brother or children have Facebooks you can directly search for their names and find them and request them. But I want you to notice this right here. On the picture on the left hand side, you'll notice friend requests and you can confirm or delete the request. Those are people that have asked you to be their friend. But right below that is worth noticing too. It says people you may know. So Facebook is pretty smart and it can maybe find people with your same last name or who you share friends with. They suggest people that you might want to add as a friend. These are not requests. You'll notice the difference there. There's the confirm and delete. That means someone requested you and you can choose say to say yes or no to that. But these are people you may know, so you can click on add friend or just remove this suggestion. So, for example, um, I know that with my family, my mom has a very large family. So if I were to start adding my cousins, other cousins of mine may start showing up because they're all friends too. But you'll just notice that difference between confirming or adding a friend yourself. There are three different ways that you can 
communicate and connect on Facebook. So for example, if someone writes a post and I will share my Facebook very soon, there are typically three different things you can do to interact with somebody. There is what's called liking, commenting, and sharing. Liking is basically an acknowledgement of something that someone has posted. So for example, I posted the other day a picture of my niece and I, I was holding my baby niece, and I said, this is the best way to spend a day off or something of that sort. And people can decide to like it, but you actually have several options on Facebook to react. And you'll notice that on the bottom right hand corner of my PowerPoint screen. There are six different reactions that you can have. Well, actually, now there's seven. Um, I haven't updated this since the new button came out. But the thumbs up means you like it. The heart indicates that you love it. The third icon is a laughing face, meaning you think it's funny. The fourth one is a wow, you know, icon. The fifth one is a sad face. So maybe someone posted something that um, was rather emotional or sad. You can react that way. And the last one is the angry icon. They added a seventh one this last year and it's called care. So you can decide to show that you care about them or that Facebook post. But this is just one way you can interact with people on Facebook. When, now, when, did the, when was oh, the care ahead, one Carl. added, Rita? I, I don't have care on my Facebook. Now it depends on if you've updated your Facebook. So if you oh. have, if you're using like a touch device, you might have to update the app, okay. but you'll notice that that is added. I know for some people it came later, but we've had it around for several months now. And I, I recommend if you can just update the app on your smart device. It's too bad they don't have a thumbs down, don't like. They have been, you know, that has been a, a request for a really long time. I don't necessarily know why they haven't. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're trying to keep it as positive as possible, but maybe they indicated the angry face being um, a good substitute for that. Angry or sad. Right. and. It used to be just the thumbs up button. The extra reactions, I guess I should say, have come a lot later. So commenting, you can actually write a comment about a post. For, so for example, I told you about that Facebook post of me holding my niece, my baby niece. Um, there have been people that commented on it and said really, really nice things. Or maybe someone posed a question. So for example, I recently asked for recommendations on a landscape company and people were able to comment and let me know what their recommendation was. So that's the second way that you can interact on Facebook. Sharing is the third option. So this means someone has written a Facebook post or, or put something on their profile and you liked it so much that you want to put it on your profile. That means you can share what they said and put it on your Facebook page. And I'll show you an example of that later on. But you can add your own thoughts about the share. Um, and sometimes that option isn't even there. Sometimes you cannot share a post, um, depending on privacy settings but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're in Facebook. So again, those are the three ways you can interact, liking or reacting, commenting and sharing. So we'll talk about notifications when it comes up. Now, before we, before we get into showing you, this is the way that you can share something about yourself. And basically, it's whatever is on your mind. 
Maybe you want to share a picture of your family. Maybe you want to share your opinion about something. Or maybe you want to ask a question. So you have a few different ways you can do that. You can type what you're feeling. You can share a photo or a video. Or you can do both. You can write and share a picture all at the same time. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to share my Facebook screen. Are there any questions so far while my internet is catching up with me? Yeah, Rita, when you have that um, friend of a friend thing, if you don't want it, but your sister does, did you still have your stuff out there for everybody else? Nope. So if my sister decides to have the friends of the friends option, that means my friends could see her stuff, but it doesn't mean the opposite for me. So your so settings specifically catered to your preferences. Okay, so I didn't know if you would be an unwilling participant in something you don't want. Nope, I think uh, they, it, it's all specific to um, what you prefer. So everybody can see my screen, correct? You'll let me know if you can't. I'm muted. Right now we should, Carlson, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. I had a quick question, but I was muted. Sure. Uh, I sometimes want to share something that somebody posted. Uh -huh. The share option is not there. Correct. But, so I end up doing a workaround like a copy paste. Yeah. Is, it, is that the best way to do that? Yes. So okay. for example, if I, me as Rita, have privacy settings that make it so you can't share my stuff, then that is the reason why. Okay. And you can change the settings for each individual post, okay. depending on who's the person doing it. <clears throat> so um, if you don't see that option, that's because their privacy settings are strict. Okay. Yeah. So what you're looking at right now is my profile. This is everything that I have shared and that I've decided to let other people, my friends see. <clears throat> You'll notice in the back here is my cover photo. That's the, the long landscape photo. And I decided to do the sunflower picture, right? The, the, the one glimmer of wonderfulness that we got late this summer. <laughs> um, and you'll notice on the right hand side here, um, it, it gives me a lot of things. It tells us when I posted that, which was September 24th. And you can see there's 25 reactions. Um, there's the like button, the love button, and the wow button. And then someone commented on it saying that this is the flower that she took. So, you know, I didn't write anything about it, but I could have. Um, and then you'll notice all of the reactions here. Okay. Now, this is the picture that is public on my Facebook page. So this is what people would see if they were searching for, for me. And this is my husband and I on our honeymoon. And I decided to write that I was feeling nostalgic and missing Scotland. And you'll notice that there were 54 reactions and four comments about it. So that's the part that's public, but my friends were very sweet and, and reacted to it. Okay. So as I go down here, I have a couple of options. Um, you'll notice that there's this section that says, what's on your mind? This is where I could add my thoughts, right? I can type in, um, I'm teaching a Zoom on Facebook today, Oops. right? And once I post that, that will stay on my profile page but people will be able to see it on their newsfeed, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But I decided I'm not going to do that, so I don't, I don't need to, to write a post. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice I shared 14 hours ago a picture, all right? 
This is a picture of my, um, my mom's cookie jar that she thinks is 20 or 35 years old. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people can react to it and comment on it. This is where I've written Facebook posts about my friends. Here's uh, my picture I told you about with my little niece, Olivia. But I want to get down a little bit more here. This is something that I decided to share. And it was a video that we actually did through the Wood County um, Senior Center. So we're going to keep going here. I also shared a post about the Veterans Day event that we're doing. And that is how I, I clicked on this share button here to be able to do that. So if you find that maybe a business is promoting an event that you are really, you, that you want to help promote, sharing would be the, the option for you to put it on your own Facebook page. And the last example I'm going to show you is that I was looking for recommendations for someone to winterize our sprinklers and people were able to comment and give me suggestions. All right. So that's my own personal profile. Again, these are things that I have decided to share. It's kind of like a timeline based on everything I've shared since I've had a Facebook. So I could go back years and years and look at everything that I've posted. All right. Any questions about the profile page itself? That's a lot of friends, Rita. 605? I've had Facebook for a long time. And like mm -hmm. I said before, friends, you know, that, that could be a very loose term, right? Do I personally know all these people ever, very well? Did you ever unfriend anybody? Yes. So you do have that option, actually. And we can, I want to see if I can. Without their knowing? Yes. So if you decide maybe that you don't want to be friends with someone anymore, you can absolutely remove them from your friends list they will not be notified that that is happening. So let's go to my sister's Facebook. I'm not going to unfriend her, but I will show you how that would work. I go to their Facebook page. We are currently friends, um, but I can decide a few different things. I can unfriend her. Mm. Maybe there's someone that you don't really appreciate what they're sharing on Facebook, or maybe you've grown apart and you're not interested in them being on your friends list, you can choose to unfriend them. There's actually an option to unfollow them, meaning that you wouldn't have to see what they post all the time. But they would still see your post? Mm -hmm. If that is their option, yes. Okay. Yes. So like I said, there may be some things that people post that are um, something that you may not like to see. Maybe it's full of uh, content that you find inappropriate or they don't align politically the same way as you do and you just don't wanna see that. Um, this option does not unfriend them, but it will prevent you from seeing anything they post. How about those other two options, favorites and edit friend list? Yeah, so favorites would mean I would get to see everything that they post no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, and there's an algorithm, like a formula that Facebook has that compiles what you see. Mm -hmm. So if I favoriting Monica, I would see everything that she posts. Have you done that on any of yours? Yeah, by family, I prefer to, you know, I, I tend to see most of their stuff anyways. Right. Um, or if maybe there's a business that I really like to follow, I would, I would favorite them so that, that I could see. That way you wouldn't miss anything. Exactly, exactly. And how about the um, edit? The edits, now this would be my option to go look at my entire friends list and decide if I want to delete a bunch of people. Oh, Maybe I think, gosh, I don't need 600 friends. I'm going to edit that and I'm going to slim do, it down. You could do a number of them in one fell swoop. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. You can filter it out as much as you want. Um, and you can have as many friends as you want. I think the cap is 5,000 friends, wow. which 
I, I could never. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I will ever know that many people. I don't even think Trump has that many. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, with Facebook's businesses are different and, and celebrities are different. So, mm -hmm. so let, me, let me show you an example. Um, I don't know if, well, we'll get to the celebrities in a minute. So this is what's called my newsfeed. It's a very busy screen. If you have a smart device, that means um, like a tablet or a smartphone, you'll notice there's a lot less on your screen. So a computer, you would get all of the buttons. But take a look here. I've got advertisements. This is how I know that someone's paying for me to see this sponsored, right? People are paying for me to see a Shutterfly advertisement. But my, this is my newsfeed. As I'm scrolling down and going through, I'm going to get a compilation of all my friends' Facebook posts, okay? And it's all relevant to the time. So within the last two days, I might see people's Facebook posts. But it, you typically wouldn't see something from more than that. So I love the National Park Service and they post very funny statuses. And so I like to follow them and they talk about, you know, all kinds of things, spiders, animals, what have you, or being safe in the parks. So I enjoy doing that. And you'll notice that they have a lot of followers. They have 8,000 people that already reacted to that. Aha. My second advertisement, you'll notice that this says the word sponsored right below insomnia cookies. That means that local cookie place paid for an advertisement for local people to see. All right. And then I've got a friend who posted a picture of her baby. Um, you know, other friends who have shared videos, what have you. I've got another advertisement. I mean, they are endless. I want to get, this is also an opportunity for businesses to update their clients. So for example, a business that I like from Sylvania posted about an update on the coronavirus and how they are exposed. So this is, you know, a place where a lot of people decide to share a lot of content. Um, I want to get to one more here. Is that in any sort of order, like chronologically? No, mm -mm. it's not chronological. It is a formula that, that Facebook creates based on a lot of things. And it's very deeply complicated, but they may mix in all kinds of information. I also love Scotland, so I follow a page called Scotland the Beautiful, so I get to see pictures, you know, of the country. Um, there's one more, maybe I won't be able to see it. Oh, and then also I follow a local um, community garage sale site so that people in Bowling Green can sell locally, maybe used items that they have. So Facebook is used for a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, you can spend a lot of time on Facebook and it feels pretty endless. But another thing that folks like to do is follow, if you like celebrities, um, let's see. I follow, I love Julie Andrews. I think a few of you were on our, our chat the other day <laughs> and know that I'm, I'm a huge fan of Julie Andrews. But she has an official Facebook page and I know that it's officially her because of this blue check mark. But I can find out all these updated news about Julie Andrews and, you know, it's, if that is something that interests you, most celebrities have their own Facebook page. And I like that, right? It's nice and light and cheery, or maybe you're very passionate about somebody and they have a Facebook page. You could probably find them. What is important to note is that looking for that blue check mark lets you know that that's officially them. So there's a lot of people who like to have fake accounts, you know, that like to impersonate. Well, the blue check mark lets you know that a celebrity is in fact them. Okay. So questions so far it is a lot. 
And this is really just touching the very basics of Facebook in general. Um, but are there questions about what we've covered that you think, you know, that you would really like to know? Rita, what I want to know is how is Messenger connected to Facebook? Good question. Um, so Julie is talking about a private messaging um, option that Facebook offers. It is called Messenger. That's M-E-S-S-E-N-G-E-R. It is this symbol. So you'll notice right here. I don't know if you, can you see my mouse when I move it, Julie? No. No, you can't. Okay, so to the top right corner is this number one symbol, okay? And it's got like a comic talking bubble with a lightning bolt in it. This is the private messaging system that Facebook created. If you are on a computer, like I am right now, a laptop computer, it is built in to your Facebook app. This allows you to communicate privately with people. So if I wanted to privately message, let's say Julie, I can do that. And only she would see our conversation. You can also have groups, private message groups with people. Um, so let's say you and a couple of friends share a Facebook chat, but it's all private. If you're on a smart device, so that means a tablet or a smartphone, it is a separate app. So you'll notice you'll have Facebook, the, the blue F or the white F in the blue circle, and then there is a different app for Messenger. They're both free. It's just you would need two different apps for that. And there's a reason for that. You know, it's a way to communicate um, with anybody in the world using just the internet. So that's why it's separate. But um, yeah, it's your way to privately message other people. And Facebook created that. So I use email a lot, but that's a lot quicker to do messenger because like mm -hmm. um, I go to bed with my Kindle next to my pillow because my um, granddaughter uh, messages me at midnight sometimes and it oh. well, she's on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I can communicate with her in the middle of the night. And I like that it dings because it's a distinct um, sound to it that's not regular for my Kindle. Yes. And you can send pictures or anything you want in there. And they also have an option to do phone calls and stuff through that. Yes. Yes. That it deserves its own presentation, truly, because it, it really gives opportunity. Um, so I'll give you a brief example. When we, when my husband and I went to Scotland and Ireland um, last year for our honeymoon, you know, we weren't able to use our cell phones normally because we have an American number, not a European number. But we still wanted to be able to communicate with our family. And we did that through Facebook Messenger. As long as you have internet access, you can message anybody who has internet all around the world. That gives you that opportunity to talk very easily and quickly, like Julie said, without needing a cell phone, right? You couldn't you know, have it on your smartphone, but you can use a tablet, a computer. Anytime you have internet, you can message. So that is really nice for travelers like, like myself um, or people that live in different countries that you still want to communicate with. So that deserves its own presentation because there's a lot to it. Like Julie said, you can video chat or basically have a phone call over the internet using Facebook Messenger. It's, it's incredible technology that we have, we have, you know, been able to reap the benefits from. On that messenger, Rita, do you ever get a video and you, it's so, it's so tiny and you click on it, you know, you can't get it to blow up, you know, fill out your screen with it. Hmm. You ever have that problem? Yes. Sometimes videos are rather large and the only way they can send is by shrinking it. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so tiny I can't even, you know, decide. Yeah, and sometimes they're very fuzzy too, I'll bet. Like it's yeah. not very clear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's the how big the file is, how big the video is affects mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where Any do you other go? Questions? Yeah. Where do you go to like research a topic? So with Facebook, I would not consider this a search engine like Google. Um, Facebook is a way that people communicate. Now, you can absolutely look for pages that interest you. So for example, if you're really interested in um, some, some topic, maybe you really enjoy um, animals and or the parks right and you can follow certain pages um that share information often but i would never consider it like a a place where you can look for information and know and know something as easily as if you would just google it so one thing it's worth noting on facebook is you know sharing information right there is a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there that's shared on purpose to deter someone from something or to influence you so it's worth if you find something on facebook that was shared make sure that is true at least to your best ability um, before sharing it so there's a lot of wrong information that is shared on Facebook that could be considered satirical or funny, but maybe misconstrued to somebody else who takes it very seriously. And um, so that's also a different topic, but worth noting to be very cognizant of what you share. Um, what are those icons up there? Uh, one of them's a, fl a flag with a nine plus. Mm -hmm. So and these the are, so this is home. So if I clicked on my home button, that takes me back to the news feed where I can look at everybody's posts, right? Pages, okay. these are pages that I follow. So I follow a lot of pages that, um, or excuse me, pages that I manage. Okay. So I manage, I'm one of the people who manages our Facebook page for the senior center, but I can also look on my left side pages that I like, meaning pages that I've decided to follow. So I can look at there. Um, and the, the nine notification button means that I have notifications that I need to look at. Okay. But okay. this one, watch, is basically videos that are decided for me that might be interesting to me. Okay. Um, I don't use that very much because it just doesn't interest me. But the next icon, which is also worth a different presentation, is called Trump. Facebook Marketplace. Now, have any of you heard of Facebook Marketplace? No. No. I have. Yeah, my you have it. Has anybody purchased through it? I have. My daughter does a lot of stuff on that site. Yeah. So Facebook Marketplace is um, designed for local sellers, for the most part. <clears throat> so, for example, if I'm I work in Bowling Green, so I get notified of a range around Bowling Green that people are selling things. So take a look here. This barn door TV stand um, is selling for $200 from Toledo, Ohio. I can get this area rug for $200 from Savania. Um, Holland, Swanton, Savania. But this, you know, these are just suggestions. But I can search for something. Like maybe I'm looking for, like my coworker is looking for um, stuff for her, her new baby that's coming. So she went on Facebook Marketplace to look for some gently used items that she could buy for cheaper from someone local instead of buying something new. <clears throat> so this is a really great opportunity. It's very similar to eBay um, or Craigslist. So Craigslist is probably the most relevant um, comparison that you can search for things locally and buy from someone locally. So for example, if I click on 
Well, that's expensive. Let's take a look at, uh, if I click on this, <clears throat> she said, you know, $1, that means that she probably listed a lot of things and can't put all of the prices in one thing, but they are selling canisters and whatnot. Um, if someone sells often, they actually might have a rating for how legitimate they are. So maybe in the past, they sold um, some like table and chairs and it was a really good experience and the details they gave were true according to the buyer. You can decide from there if they're a legitimate, play, a legitimate person to buy from. But you can learn a few things right off the bat like the condition, the brand, and then some people are very thorough. They might give measurements for something or they might um, give the exact problem with it if they're getting rid of it for that reason. So you can decide um, and then you end up messaging them to figure out where you can purchase it. How about and my daughter sold a lot of uh, Halloween costumes this last yeah. month. Oh, that's she a good had, idea. She had so many old costumes that don't fit them, so she put them online. She sold all of them. That's great. Yeah, we did. We, we used Facebook Marketplace to sell a lot of the things um, when we did an estate sale for Kyle's grandparents. Um, the thing is, we were able to sell to, all of it. You have to get a safe meeting place when you go to do the exchange. Yes. She usually yes. goes to like oh, my hairs or mm -hmm. yeah. A public place. Yeah. Um, or, yeah or bring someone with you at least. <laughs> There's always safe, you know, definitely safe things you can do when you purchase from someone local. The last one are groups. So this is like groups that I, just, that I am part of. So I'm part of the Bowling Green Garage Sale Group and I can take a look and I can sell things on that group. Um, I'm also part of the Wood County Online Sale Group. Uh, let's see here. I'm part of like the traveling groups that I showed you before, the Scotland stuff. I mean, there's a lot of groups that you can be part of and then you can specifically go to this option to filter it out. Um, but they also show up on my newsfeed. So it just depends on a lot of things, right? I, I see a lot of things from the Scotland page on my newsfeed and different things from the Bowling Green Online Community Garage Sale. So those are what those icons are for. I always say, if you're, if you're curious about something, click on it, check it out. Um, you're not gonna break it by clicking those buttons, but it's the best way to get to know your Facebook is by exploring. The pages um, one again, Rita, the pages one? Yeah. Is that basically what comes up when you bring up your Facebook uh, and scroll down? Yes, a lot of it, mm-hmm. Okay. It's mixed in with like my friends updates too. Okay. That just gives you a way of going back to it quickly. Exactly. Yeah. It, it filters it out. It gives okay. you only the pages you follow instead of a mix of okay. your friends stuff plus the pages. Gotcha. You may not see all of this on your newsfeed. You know, some things may never show up. It just depends on the, the formula that Facebook creates for you. Okay. Yeah. So one thing I want to mention, if you're concerned about your privacy, if you're concerned about uh, your um, settings and what they're at, like you're thinking, oh my gosh, is my Facebook public? Could anybody look at my stuff? Um, by, and it looks different on every device. So we're currently looking at a desktop or a laptop computer. But if you need help navigating this on a smart device, we can chat afterwards. But by clicking on account, I have lots of options here, but I'm gonna go to settings and privacy, okay? And then new options came up and I want to go to um, privacy checkup, okay? So I can go through this and I, I will only go through one of them with you, but it, it breaks down what your Facebook is already doing and what you would prefer it to do. So who can see what I share? Um, and it really is simple. They walk you through everything. 
So I can decide if I want to, you know, show my private information. I have a lot of stuff designated that only I can see it or my friends could see it. So for example, my education, I'm showing to my friends that I went to BGSU. Um, I went to Northview in Savannah, and you can change all of those settings. You can even add where you've worked, where you've lived, you know, be very wary if, if you are not comfortable, you don't have to put this information. And this is where, um, this is where this, those three options come up. Public, right? So anyone on or off Facebook can see what I post. Um, friends, or, you know, I can specifically change for a lot of things what only I want to see. Um, so I'm not going to go through them. That is something that you should do on your own Facebook to check it out. But it walks you through everything. And then you can actually block certain people, maybe someone that you really don't want them friending you. They really don't, you know, you don't want to be friends with them. And they cannot find you if, you are, they, if they are blocked. So anyways, I encourage you to do this again. You go to your account and you go find settings and privacy. You do a privacy checkup and you will be prompted with all of these options. And I encourage you to click on each one of them to look at your privacy settings. And if anyone needs help doing this, like if you wanted my help um, figuring out, um, you know, what, what is best for you, you want help removing information that you've already put in Facebook, you know, we're gonna start being able to take one-on-one -on -one appointments starting next Tuesday. So you just have to call me and then we can figure that out and I'm happy to help. I can also navigate that with you over the phone. So just, just uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then I think there was something else I wanted to share with you. Actually, I think that's it. So, questions. I know it's a lot, but um, are there any general questions that you would like answered? I've had a few friends who have told me that they were hacked, which mm -hmm. I guess would mean that somebody had set up a profile on them. And I've also received uh, friend requests from people that I know I'm already friends with. Yep. And I just ignore them. But what, what would happen if I happen to confirm a friend request on somebody because maybe I'd forgotten that they were my friend or something? Is that going to cause any problem? Or just going to create another friend, a, a false friend? So what I would recommend, the first thing I would do is if you did, in fact, accept that friend request, I want you to go search in your friends. And you can do by that by typing in the search bar, search for that friend and unfriend them. That is the first step. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they're just impersonating somebody. But if you ever are involved in something like that, change your password. Change your password, unfriend that person, and then let them know, maybe by calling or messaging them safely, to let them know that they're being impersonated. If, let's say, I see a friend request from John Smith, even though I know John and I are friends, there's actually an option next to it, you know, where it says accept or delete. There's usually a button to the right that will let me report that. So if I know that that is for sure not them, I can report that and Facebook investigates it. And Facebook is rather quick about that. You know, they have a whole team that is dedicated to um, getting rid of fake profiles. And then again, letting that person know safely. If you feel like, you know, maybe you accepted their friend request, change your password. And that's also in the settings of your Facebook, which is how I showed you how to get to privacy. I've done searches by putting the name in of maybe a distant friend, somebody yep. I, I hadn't seen in years. Yes. And their name will pop up several times. Yes. And I'll go to each one to, and then look at the thread of, mm -hmm. you know, postings and so forth. Yeah and determine whether or not, okay, is this the person I really want to 
yep. be friends with. And some of them, I've, I've determined that it's, it is the same person, and they got a number of uh, profiles out there. And mm -hmm. maybe some of them, but the posts go back maybe even years, but you can tell from what the posts are that it was them. Yep. So they, they, they put more than one profile out there. Yes, that really is very sure. common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you look for the one that's the most recent postings. Yeah. So that there might be a few issues there. So it could be that they had a Facebook and then they forgot the password and wasn't able to get into their old Facebook anymore. So they made a new one. Or maybe they have two and they decide to use two. Um, okay. So yeah, you find the most recent possible. Right. And then we'll activity you know. and then yeah. go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you may never know. Sometimes their privacy settings are rather um, strict, so you may not be able to see any information about them. Sure. Yeah. So it's it's just there's a lot to Facebook, isn't there? <laughs> Hard to keep up with everything. Right. Anything else I can answer for you? All right. It's very informative. Good. I'm glad. And again, I'm here, so call me. You know, if you're if you're if you're dealing with something and you're questioning it or you need help navigating, I can I, help you. I, I got a uh, email from uh, oh, Troy Point, Troy Point, and I've been able to put things up uh, and, and stream on things like you know do movies and that. And it's really good, even new movies. Yeah. The two things that they, they uh, kind of, you know, uh, I follow their instructions and in doing it. And the latest email said that they have the ability, if, if you don't like to put up with the uh, ads on uh, YouTube, and it goes through uh, and, and gives you instructions on how you can get rid of the ads on YouTube, if that's something you'd be interested in. Yeah, so they, um, you know, you can pay for a, a fee. To a premium get YouTube, fee. yeah, premium YouTube. Well, apparently he's got a, a workaround on that. Oh, dear. <laughs> As I, has, I deal with ads. I mean, I just... You don't it, mind it, them. Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, well, this is they how me. they make money, right? No, I, just kind of, <laughs> I just kind of ignore them, but it's not like television ads. I mean, television, you just, you're, you're like a captive audience unless you've got a way of fast forwarding through them, which I don't. Right, but. right. Yeah, there's really, you know, unless you want to pay, then mm -hmm. you will deal with advertisements no matter what. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anything Rita, else? To join groups, is there a place where you can find what the groups are? Because the ones that I've joined is because I've seen them online and then I, I joined. Because I got an air fryer, uh, you know, and I didn't know how to use it. And, uh, and I have a, an Instapot and they have lots of recipes or they have a lot of troubleshooting stuff because they've all done it like anything that could go wrong. If you post anything, they get back to you right away. Yeah. And you get like, oh, I have to shut them off because we'll get like 600 people answering the one question. Uh -huh. <laughs> the thing is, you so, don't know where they're at because sometimes you assume they're close by, but some of them are like in other countries. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yep. It's, it's interesting, but yeah, they're yeah. really helpful for that. So I, I use those. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. There might and be some pages like there. I know there's recipe pages that strictly like put out how to make something. They even have a video sometimes. So you just search and for I, it. If you have an interest, okay. I search for it. There's something out there for you. I've got the Wood County page. And sometimes if I'm, if I'm confused about if there's roads closed anywhere, I'll say, hey, I'm going somewhere. Does you, you know, anybody know if the roads are clear? Because I knew there was going to be construction. And right away, somebody will say, yeah, they, they've gone through there or whatever. So yeah. You know, have you ever followed the Wood County Scanner? Wood County Scanner gives updates like that. I should, I'll share, I'll share that with you. Um, oh, okay, yeah, because, yeah, and it's, and they always seem to have a lot of information about all kinds of things, you know, yeah. road conditions, everything. It's like, and they, they, I think they just sit around like me doing nothing but playing with their, their devices all day. <laughs> <laughs> they have time, right? They, they're, they're able to give everybody the information. Makes There's some better. people that only do that for a living, you know, that's, that's, I see. Because I, I, it makes me feel good because I'm not the only person with no life. I think there's a lot of people in your boat right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much. I really do appreciate you joining me. Thank yeah, you so much. <laughs>
fun. When you were talking about appointments on Tuesday, is that just for Facebook or is that for any kind of technology? Any kind of technology. I don't fix, I don't fix devices. I don't have that type of um, ability, but I can help teach a lot of the things. Um, so it just depends on what you would like, but we are doing limited appointments between 10 and two, Monday through Friday. Oh. Is that for all the departments, like the social and everything else, or just yours? Yes. Yep. So the social, the social services department and me, pretty much, in our department, if we do tech, we can do one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. That's yeah. wonderful. And then, yeah. like, a little bit here and there, we're getting more. <laughs> and then, like, for, to find other Zooms that you've done to, like, go back, how do you yep. find, how do you do that? So it's on our YouTube channel. Okay. And um, if you get our weekly email, which I think you do in that, mm -hmm. you do share that at the bottom, a okay. link, or you can search for WCCOA in YouTube. You just type in WCCOA Incorporated and you'll find us. Okay. Okay. But it's in our emails all the way at the bottom. Okay. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. Happy Halloween. Hey, yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye.